Hi, I'm Trev Hutchings, and this is how to install and use the Native Instruments Contact 7 player. Double tap on the Native Access shortcut. Scroll down to the Contact 7 player. Then click on Install. Now click on Install below Contact Factory Selection 2. Once both Contact 7 Player and Contact Factory 2 are installed, click on the X icon to close the Native Access window. Next, we need to start the standalone version of Contact 7 Player, so it updates its database to include the Contact Factory Selection 2. So, click on Start, Scroll down to Native Instruments. Click on the down arrow to expand the Native Instruments folder. Then click on Contact 7 Player. Now click on File. Click on Options. Then click on Libraries on the pop-up Options window. You should now see Contact Factory Selection 2 in the list. Now click on Close. Then click on File again. And click on Exit. Now, open Cakewalk by BandLab and either open a project or create a new project. Now, in my version of Cakewalk by BandLab, it didn't detect the Contact 7 player at startup like it should have done. Now, maybe that's a bug, I don't know, but I had to click on Edit, click on Preferences, click on VST Settings, then click on the drop list and click on Scan on Startup, then click on the Rescan Failed Plugins tick box and the Rescan All Plugins tick box. And I also clicked on the Generate Scan Log tick box for good measure, but you probably don't need to do that one. Then I clicked on Scan. and the Contact 7 player was now detected. OK, so now click on the Add Track icon. Click on Instrument. Click on the Instrument drop list. 
click on uncategorized and click on contact seven. If you have a MIDI keyboard connected to your computer, you can click on the input drop list and click on your MIDI keyboard. Then click on Create. If the Contact 7 player window doesn't open, click on the instrument icon. To change the view, click on Player. Then click on View. And click on Rack View. Here in the left pane, you can see the plugins. And if you click on Instruments, then click on a category. you can see the different sounds. But for this demo, we're going to use the other view. So click on player. In this view, all the sounds are shown in the right pane. And when you click on one of the sounds, you'll hear a demo of the sound. Use the scroll bar to scroll through the sounds. Now click on sound type. Here, you can click on the category tabs to reduce the amount of sounds down to the ones of that category. So for instance, click on guitar. Now click on character. Here, you can reduce the selection further by adding a character tab. Click on a tab a second time to turn off the tabs. To select a sound, double click on the sound. Now that the sound is loaded, you can see that on the keyboard, there are some blue keys and white keys. The blue keys are the ones that have the sounds. Near the top of the image is a slide bar. The slide bar changes depending on the instrument. Here it is a tremolo. Pressing on the slide bar and dragging left or right will change the amount of tremolo. Drag it all the way to the left to turn off tremolo. At the top right of the image is the effects. So click on effects. The effect screen now appears. To turn on or off an effect, click on the on off icon to the left of the effect name.
Press on the effect control knobs and drag up or down to change the control knobs. Some of the controls have a drop list. To close the effect screen, Click on Effects again. Next to the Effects icon is the Settings icon. Here are some controls around the notes themselves. So now you know the basic functions. Click on the X icon to close the window. And to record some sound, click on the red dot on the Contact 7 track. If you don't have a keyboard, click on Keyboard. This will open up the virtual keyboard. Now press on the record icon and play the keyboard. If you enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up and click on that subscribe button. Cheers.